Say it ah. We going to drag. <laughs> Hello. Okay, I want to uh, come up here and do a little commentary on this uh, last Greenleaf episode, episode 10. Okay, I've got a big problem with this episode for the first time. So I'll get to it in a minute. But All right, so the episode opens where we hear a gunshot. As we know, we left off last week. Uh, Matt, I mean, uh, Bishop was holding the gun on Matt's chest. And Grace was running towards the office, Matt's office, having an intu after having an intuition that something was going on. Okay, so this scene, this episode opens with uh, hearing a gunshot, a very light type gunshot. It's not a big boom, but I guess uh, several people heard it, heard the shot. Okay. So here's here's my my, my big uh, issue with this. Okay, well, so first, okay, so Matt has so so Bishop has actually shot Matt. Now the wound it looks like it's in between like the shoulder blade or the uh, uh, right, right side of his chest, but it's not in his heart. At first, I thought it was his heart because I mean it was all his blood, and then but it looks like he might be actually in in shoulder blade. Okay, so let me see. I got notes here. We're going to do the best we can. Okay. Okay, so now at first, Grace bursts into the office, and she's, of course, wants to go to the, to the phone to call 911. Bishop and Matt are telling her not not to call the police. Uh, and, and Matt asks, them for five minutes alone with the bishop and she agrees to it but she says after that uh then she's calling them now they don't want him to call call the 911 but aren't they concerned about him bleeding out i mean uh the bishop has a a problem with grace after that for the first time because usually he's on her side in most things but uh he's really upset that she called 911 so I don't know if he wanted him to just die, or or they wanted to take him take him somewhere. It's not clear. But my problem with the issue is that it's a very nonchalant attitude about Bishop just shot this man in the chest. Now after uh, he's taken away to to the hospital uh, by the, uh, the ambulance shows up, they take him to they throw him on a gurney. Jimmy, stop! They show him on a gurney. And then soon after that, they show the bishop being handcuffed and arrested. Now, you would think that this would be a major thing when the bishop of a church shoots a man in the chest on church ground, in the church office. You would think that this be a, would be a, a major thing. But for some reason or other, the, the writers are presenting this as no, no big deal. Like bishop shoot... Uh, <laughs> shoot their employees in the chest all the time or their brother-in-law's in the chest all the time. So May comes into, breaks into the office. I guess she hears the shot or hears the commotion. Naturally, she blames Grace. Like she blames Grace for everything that happens bad in their family. But, uh, so I figure, oh, he's going to jail. I mean, this, you would think there would be news cameras, that there would be, I mean, the whole building would rush into the office. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So, let me see. I was arrested. Why? So I wrote down why is everyone so nonchalant about the fact that he just shot this man? I mean, it's attempted murder. Now, they have this big dinner. I guess the evening dinner at, at the house. And uh, and Bishop walks in. On, was walking on the dinner? No. Lady May announces that she's going to jail to to to, to pick up to pick him up. I guess the uh, Matt doesn't press charges. Now I don't know what, I mean, laws vary from state to state, but I would still think that if you have just shot a man in the chest, you would not be getting out of jail the next day, because the the victim just, uh, doesn't press charges. Is it that simple? Apparently it is in uh, in in Tennessee. 
Okay, so Bishop Waltz. It seems like there's there's no there's no talk about uh, him him returning to court or, or or anything being pressed against him. It's just over with. Matt doesn't press charges, and that's the end of it. From what we from what what is presented here. Okay, so <clears throat> they're having a deacon meeting, or our, our pastors are meeting with the deacons, and. And the bishop walks into the room. This is a day later. And he goes over to Grace. And he says, uh, Pastor, if you excuse us. Huh? Excuse I want you to leave. So we've never seen those two go at it at each other. They've always respected each other a lot. And she is his favorite. But uh, I guess he really takes issue with the fact that he, he called the uh, 911 or involved the police. But uh, so he asked her to leave, Grace to leave. And later on, uh, she comes to go and have a talk with him. And this, this secretary, this uh, incompetent uh, <laughs> woman <laughs> who usually has headphones off. Oh, she probably took her headphones off, the bishop's new secretary. She takes her head off. When, when people are getting shot and things, she decides to take her headphones off find out what the hell's going on. Anyway, Grace shows up at the office to talk to him, and he will not see her. And so she turns around and leaves. Very interesting. They let me shoot somebody in the chest and see if I has to be out of there next, next night. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> so let's get on to, for a minute, for Grace and Noah. All right, obviously the wedding got called off last week. Now this party that they were having, people have come out from out of town for this party, pre-party. And it's been canceled as well. Um, Noah has got a couple of out-of-town friends, more church folk, come to town and no one let them know. And more importantly, they didn't let uh, uh, Charity know. And Charity is decided to speak up in this episode because she's very offended that no one told her first that the wedding was off and that the party was off. And she's sitting here with these out-of-town guests and they're getting the news the same time she is. So they tend to leave her out of things. And so, uh, uh, Grace is, okay. And so the next thing that happens is Grace is, uh, you know, we, we know Grace is this child, Sophia. We know, and I didn't really think put much on it because Grace is a light-skinned woman with, you know, very long uh, hair, what they call good hair, I guess, but soft hair. So she could be, uh, she could be, the girl could have been her daughter, but whether the, the, her husband was, or her man she made the baby with was black or white, really. But the baby does look biracial. So but the husband shows up. Uh, he is a white guy. And the, the casting is pretty good here because the, actually the kid looks a lot like both of them. It could easily be their child. Or if those two got together, what their child would look like. Anyway, he's he showed up. He's threatened to take away Sophia because uh, of these shootings. One person being shot one weekend, the next week, you know, the bishop himself is shooting people in his office. And he, he just feels like the, <clears throat> it's not a safe place for his daughter. In addition to that, uh, he takes issue with the, with the fact that uh, Grace has taken him to this house where Uncle Matt was, knowing that Uncle Matt was uh, a molester of young girls. Uh, he don't think it's a good environment. Plus all the things that Grace has said to him when they were together about this the, the Greenleaf being an evil place. So anyway, he shows up. He threatens to take the girl away. It looks like uh, Sophia is happy there in the church environment. And so, uh, although she did call him to come, she doesn't want to leave. Right. And so, uh, Isabel, okay. Right. Isabel is Noah's former fiance. So, or the man she was about, about to marry. They've called the wedding off. And all that her family's come there the mother is taking her daughter away from these evil people but Isabel shows up in Noah's 
is his bedroom. Yeah, shows up in Noah's bedroom in his in his place. After she clears all the stuff out. Now she uh says that she wants to go away for spring break and she wants to come back and give it another try. Dumb, 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 dumb move. You don't leave the man <laughs> the man there with the woman on the same property now. As, 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 as been you've caught him che cheating on you with his ex lover, so she says she's gonna go away, and she's gonna calm down, let things settle, and she's gonna come back after spring break, so they can get back together and work their problems out. It ain't gonna happen. Y'all know it ain't gonna happen. You don't leave no no no. You don't leave your husband in the company of his ex on the same property after they didn't just uh, fucked. So anyway, she gives him his passionate kiss first. <laughs> and then she hauls off and slaps the shit out of him. <laughs> Noah doesn't say much. He's, I guess, what, the, what they used to call the strong silent type. Because he hardly says anything. I mean, he's... He, the girls are falling in love with him and everything, but he, he didn't say very much. So he don't say much when she slapped the hell out of him. All right, and then... Okay, she's going back out. So, what else? All right, we can move it on to Charity and Kevin. All right, last week, Charity had confronted her husband about this phone of his and how he's always on the phone and how he says very little to her. She's really feeling very closed off because her husband doesn't talk to her. Now her sister and her brother don't talk to her. Uh, May doesn't talk to her. The daddy don't tell her shit. People just tend to not tell her something. I don't know if they treat her like she's slow or, or they, I can see her frustration because she really is treated like a second class citizen. And she did, she did when she confronts them well, let me just say. Okay, first she goes off on her husband, right? Charity. Last week I called Charity Mercy. Her name is not Mercy, it is Charity. All these spiritual names confuse me, so forgive me. Charity. Okay, first she confronts Grace and Joshua. No, okay. She's mad at her husband. All right. Her husband is trying to convince her that nothing's wrong. He loves her just as much as he always loved her. And then he is offering her his phone. This scandalous phone of his. Now obviously he's already deleted all all the information off the phone. But, but we all know that uh, uh, in technology there are, there are many ways you can get you can get past. You can pull up deleted items. So that's probably what's going to happen. Some kind of way or other. This phone is a very integral part of the story. But he offers her the phone. Look at the phone, baby. Look at the phone. Look at the phone. I don't want to see your phone. I want to see the man that I married and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, so she's very upset with him. She tells him that you, I want you out of our bed. Until you can be honest with me and come clean about whatever's going on with you, I want you to move out of our bedroom. If you can't do that in a timely fashion, then I want you to move out of the house. And so he does move on to the couch in, in, in the bishop's living room. She also has a problem with the fact that she wasn't told about this the wedding being canceled, the party being canceled. She wasn't told about their father shooting, uh, her father shooting uh, Uncle Matt. She wasn't, I guess she didn't even know anything about the molestation things. So she goes off at the dinner table. Dinner or breakfast. I'm not sure if it's dinner or breakfast. This might be a breakfast table. Anyway, so she confronts uh, first Grace and, and, and Joshua. But not say she's not a second class citizen. And she refused to be treated that way anymore. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Although they still don't tell her anything. But uh, she then confronts her mother at this breakfast or dinner table. 
she tells her, her mother tells her to sit down, whatever, she stands up and confronts him about being left out of everything. But her mother tells her to sit down, and she tells her mother, like he, Uncle Matt was doing all these things in that house for 20 years, and you didn't know anything about it? So she's accusing her. She's accusing the mother of turning a blind eye, of being in serious denial. And uh, the mother didn't have her come back for that. She says she's right. So she storms up out of the dining room. Jacob and his wife, remember the woman who was presented as such a hateful character in the beginning, I didn't like her at all. <laughs> but now Jacob and his wife are getting along very well. In fact, they, they make uh, passionate love for the first time uh, since the series started. There's no mention of the, the white woman he was having her, uh, an affair with. Uh, I guess I assume that means it's over. He's into his wife now and, and, his, and his daughter. His, her, the daughter is, their daughter is going through a, an awkward period where she's uh, very snappy to her father and things. Just being a teenager. So uh, it's showing their family dynamic. Apparently they have a son as well. Let me think of what else happened next. Okay, so... At the end here, May comes to the hospital. Mac is laid up in the hospital after being shot. Bishop has gone back to the family in church after Matt does not press charges on him. Okay, there is something huge going on between Matt and the bishop. Matt knows something that is so, so extreme at the bishop, uh, it's, it's why they have this thing going, this information that Matt has on the bishop that could send him to prison. So now, the financial, we're already kind of aware of the financial situation. I guess they've been ironed out where he's going to be audited and all that. And he said he could go to j prison for that. But now, Matt has something else on him. So I don't know if the bishop has had some kind of affair, some one of these kids or somebody's He's the father of some other baby. We don't know what the, what the issue is or why uh, Bishop is so afraid of, of Matt. So we don't know. I don't know. It would, would it still be the financial situation. It seems like that, 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 it seems separate from that. Something else has happened. I tend to think, because usually, it is, I mean, you can see there's always some kind of sexual thing going on, that the Bishop has done something Maybe somebody is is his daughter is not supposed to be his daughter or his son not supposed to be his son. I don't know. More would be revealed there. But uh, so Matt tells his sister that he uh, he said he's waiting for his lawyer. She says don't bring she said don't bring this to the courts. I guess she want to keep it as quiet as possible. He says no. The, the lawyer is coming for them to figure out a way to get the minimum amount of time. Because so apparently he is going to turn himself in. He's going to accept prison time. He's already accepted that. And he, then they want to negotiate what could be the minimum uh, damage. Yeah, so she says she's coming, she's coming to the hospital to forgive him. It is only right that she forgives him. She has to forgive him. But God has forgiven her. But she says she can't do it. And she brings up to him that she, not only does she accept it, that he's molested these other girls, but he molested her daughter. And she didn't believe the story, and, and now that her daughter's dead. So she can't get past that. That's the way that ends. Uh, and I think it's, it's probably it's pretty much the end of it. I just don't, I don't think that they, they handled this, uh, this shooting well. I think it, that should have been a much bigger deal. It should have been reported. A, a reporter does call the house asking about a sh a, the shooting that occurred at the church. He first talks to the maid, and the maid uh, slick, uh, kind of slick tells him. The maid won't answer the question, so she, he says, well, if you don't say anything, I'll take that to mean that the sh this shooting did happen. So then the same reporter calls... Uh, Lady May, to ask her, was there a shooting at the church? 
Did she care to comment on it? And uh, he says that he already knows what happened and that the source was inside the house. <laughs> Don't know why he would tell her all that, but he did. So I guess next week the maid will get fired or something. Yeah, so that was uh, episode 10. It's a good episode. I, I just, I, I, I didn't like the, the, uh, the handling of the, the, the shooting, though. I just think, I mean, you would think he just jaywalked or something. I mean, if your pastor, uh, Bishop, shoots, <laughs> shoots one of his underlings in the, in the church office, I mean, would it, it just be a blip on the screen? I would think that would be huge. But the story progresses. I guess there's only two episodes left. So we made it all the way through this whole first season. And and uh, Oprah's doing other things, too. There's like this other series they keep advertising now. It's going to be on, on, on uh, what's it called? Late, Lady Somebody. Uh, I forget the name of it. But anyway, looks like that's going to be very interesting also. So maybe we'll pick that up as well. Episode 10. Greenleaf. I learned a little trick today. If you have Comcast, you go to OWN and you click on where they have Greenleaf on the opening screen. That will not show you episode 10. But if you go uh, to if you go to uh, TV, then go to Networks, and then go down to OWN, if you click on there, you'll get episode 10 uh, today. Maybe the other one will catch up, but uh, that's the way it works. I found that out last week. All right, people. Episode 10. Talk to you next week.